Next on News Talk AM 1480 WLEA, the Newsmaker Show. I'm Brian O'Neill. This morning on the uh, phone with Shelly Stevens, a local parent uh, who you may have uh, read recently in a Tribune article about Common Core. Wanted to talk Common Core with Shelly today. Shelly, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Shelly Stevens, I wanted to start out, uh, you're very much in the loop on what goes on with uh, NYSUT and what goes on with Common Core. Uh, yesterday, Karen McGee, the head of NYSUT in Albany, uh, issued a video where she made this statement. And I wanted to get your reaction to this. Governor Cuomo has declared war on our profession and our union. Instead of standing with educators, parents, and community, the governor's chosen to side with his billionaire friends and with those who seek to demonize public education and public service and to vilify and scapegoat teachers. He laid out his dangerous scheme with a budget proposal that holds hostage much needed education aid, tying it to the adoption of his so-called reform agenda. That agenda includes placing more emphasis on standardized tests, gutting collective bargaining rights and tenure laws, while creating an atmosphere that presumes guilt, pitting college campuses against one another, denying students opportunity and access, and seizing local control of our schools by diminishing the voice and the vote of parents, grandparents, and educators. Shelley Stevens, Karen McGee from NYSA starts out there talking about Governor Andrew Cuomo and his billionaire friends. I'm guessing, just a guess, that she's talking there about Cuomo's donors who favor charter schools? Um, I think that that would be my guess as well. What's, what's difficult, especially as a parent, to understand right now with all of the education reform that's going on from a, you know, a teacher's point of view to a student's point of view to a parent's point of view, is how, is how big the picture is in terms of players. It's, it's very hard to kind of keep up from, you know, the politicians to um, the corporations that want in on it um, to, you know, the bottom line fundamental of what a teacher is and what a teacher means um, to our students and to our future. So I, I would probably agree with you on that as well. Um, in terms of what's going on there, the charter schools are definitely um, battling the public schools for funding. And um, some cuts that were made to the GEA previously, which is funding that goes into the public schools, are cuts that really hurt us in this area, especially Alfred Allman, um, Hornell, Artport, Canisteo. Um, that's funding that that we really needed, especially given um, the um, standard of living in this area, I guess I would say. In Alfred Allman, for example, um, a lot of the property isn't taxed because of the colleges. So then the basis of the funding comes off of the other 45% of the area's taxpayers and their percentage of income. Um, you know, so for example, if Mr. Calkins raises the taxes one percent, that's an additional. I think it. I think it came out to forty or fifty thousand dollars. It's not enough to make a dent in what they would really need to have replaced. So that funding that's missing um, is definitely causing some issues uh, here locally, especially. You know, Shelly, you hear the uh, the phrase, and you were just talking about that, the gap elimination adjustment. And I'm sure that the teachers and the educators are pretty familiar with that. Average person uh, who's not involved with the educational uh, process things, I- I'm not sure they do. Can you can you tell us about the gap elimination adjustment? I absolutely can. Sorry, I called it the GEA. So, um Again, it kind of comes down to what I was just saying about how many players are involved, and it's taking me a long time to understand this. So the educators definitely do have a better understanding, but there was cuts to funding um, to public education several years ago um, that was supposed to only be temporary, and then it kind of seemed to be permanent, and 
Um, the superintendents here locally have been doing a great job of fighting to get that funding back. Um, but that's part of, of what the teachers' union president's speaking about there um, with the charter schools and, and fighting to get the funding back to public schools. And we're talking with uh, Shelley Stevens about NYSUT and uh, Common Core today on the Newsmaker Show. Getting back to the Karen McGee video. The governor's proposals are clearly designed to bully and silence you so that you can't be an effective advocate for your students. I want to assure you that your union has a strategy, a battle plan that will meet these serious challenges. We are already engaged on multiple fronts with legislative advocacy both at the Capitol and in district offices, social media engagement, advertising campaigns, including television, print, and online, press interviews and op-eds, coalition building and rallies, protests and forums being planned for every corner of New York. Okay, so Karen McGee saying that uh, they're planning on battling the governor on his budget there. And uh, NYSA did issue a statement this week saying that they were going to uh, urge and pressure lawmakers and lobby lawmakers to vote against Governor Andrew Cuomo's budget. Now, Shelley Stevens, this brings us to our next topic, which is Common Core, uh, which you, you've been very outspoken about. wondered if we could uh, talk about that for a moment. On Common Core, NYSOOT is against the Common Core. Why is that? Um, you know, so again, as, as I speak as a parent of three young kids, um, we've kind of run head on to the implementation mistakes. Um, that have taken place over the last year. Um, in my personal opinion, not to the fault of anyone, any of the teachers here locally whatsoever. Um, they were had to to play the card, the hand they were dealt, if you will. Um, and basically what's happening from an Albany standpoint from Governor Cuomo is they're putting more and more and more emphasis on the Common Core test tests that eat up on average between uh, 19 to, or sorry, 9 to about 15 hours of testing for grades 3 through 8, um, weeks and weeks of preparation. So basically you've taken out, depending on who you're talking to, a month to two months of regular learning for the, for the kids. Um, and the pressure has come on, on the teachers to make sure that from September, uh, the first time they take the test, to the end of the year when they take the test again, that they're able to show improvement solely on this test. And without the children showing improvement on that test, the teachers, in essence, are um, hurt by those scores. Um, it was previously 20% of the testing scores went towards their appraisal. Now they're talking... Now they, being Governor Cuomo, is talking up to 50% of this test score is going to be um, reported on their performance reviews. And that's, I mean, that's a test. A teacher can tell you, a good teacher can tell you any day of the week the strengths and weaknesses of, of their students, of a particular student, what they need to work on, what they're excelling on. A test doesn't measure that, and a test is definitely one test showing year-over-year growth is not how you measure a child um, and then rate a teacher on it. And then if the teacher doesn't show that growth with these students, reprimand the teachers. And that's, that's unexcusable as far as I'm concerned. It's, you need, if, you, if you speak to educators and administrations, you need tests. I'm not saying tests should go away altogether. But tests are not... 50% of what you measure a good teacher on. Good teachers make relationships. They learn their kids. They know what these kids need to move forward, and they'll make sure that they do so. And I, I would love to see Governor Cuomo step outside of Albany and right into one of these classrooms where a first-grade teacher has 25 to 30 kids. She's by herself doing everything she can to make an amazing learning experience for them day in and day out 
and then he wants to judge her by 50% for an entire year on two to three days' worth of test scores and then decide whether or not we should, she's a good teacher and whether or not we should keep her. Jelly Stevens here on AM 1480 WLEA's Newsmaker Show. We're going to take a break and come back in just a moment. Back on the Newsmaker Show, Brian O'Neill on the phone today with local parent Shelly Stevens, who's very outspoken on Common Core, very knowledgeable on the topic of uh, Nicehood and Common Core. Shelly Stevens, on the Fox News Channel's uh, weekend show with Chris Wallace, former Reagan Education Secretary Bill Bennett, who hosts a syndicated talk radio morning show, uh, was debating Texas Governor Abbott on Common Core. Here's what they said. But it's understandable why they're wrong. Uh, Common Core has been vilified because there's been tremendous amount of misinformation about Common Core. That it requires teaching of Islamic radicalism. You have to read all of Barack Obama's speeches. Uh, it's a code of political correctness. A whole mythology is built up around Common Core. Common Core are state standards for math and reading by grade. That's all they are. Anybody who questions what they are should read what the standards say. And they say such tendentious things as kids should focus on arithmetic in the early grades, learn how to count and multiply, divide and subtract. And in reading, they should emphasize phonics, the meaning of words, and good, clear expression. We have uh, former Education Secretary Bill Bennett there being pro-Common Core. Shelley Stevens, your reaction to what he said there? Um, he's absolutely right in terms of the fact that Common Core is standard. Um, but the standards are dictating their curriculum. So they are very closely attached. So the general picture he paints, I don't agree with. Um, but the Common Core standards are just that standards, if you're speaking about them all by themselves. But in the way that um, he promotes them, my response to anybody who is pro-Common uh, Core standards, I would say to look up Dr. Stan uh, Sanders Stotsky, Dr. James Milgram. Um, there were, those were the English and math professors on the Common Core Validation Committee. There was a total of five educators on this, this standards validation committee before the standards were rolled out, and all five of the educators rejected these standards. Governor Greg Abbott, the Texas governor, responding to some of what uh, Bill Bennett said there. Uh, what I believe is the correct approach for education is to return genuine local control, uh, which is what I have charted the pathway for as governor. Uh, and we will improve our schools from the bottom up uh, by allowing uh, teachers to excel, by uh, increasing parental involvement, by engaging students. And the best way to do that is not with these one-size-fits-all mandates from Washington, D.C., or even from Austin, Texas but instead giving ability at the local level, well, let me, let me, starting with let, building let, a strong we want to have a debate. Uh, 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 local control is, is what we have, and local control is what we should have. Curriculum is set I, locally. I'm not to disagree. Uh, c curriculum is set. Uh, let, but, 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 let, now, Shelley Stevens, did you want to jump in there and comment on what uh, Bill Bennett, uh, the former education secretary, and Governor Greg Abbott were saying? Um, again, it comes. They're, they're correct, and the curriculum is set locally. It can be adapted or adopted, um, which means to take it on in full, um, which would be engaged New York without changing it, or to alter it. Um, however, again, the standards are dictating how the curriculum is rolled out. Uh, what Governor Abbott is talking about, in theory, is exactly what we would like to have happen. Um, we would love for our superintendents who are, who are very well versed, have many, many years of teaching here locally, uh, to be able to develop the, um, the curriculum on, on their own with their staff who are also veterans. Um, and that's actually what was happening in Albany prior to the Common Core and Engaged New York curriculum rollout. There were a set of standards being developed and the curriculum by New York State teachers and administration that was going to be um, the first of its kind and had already been given, um, you know, great reviews, but it never got a chance to be rolled out. And, and that's what's disappointing. What Governor Abbott talking about would be absolutely wonderful. But again, the picture is so big, it's hard to understand sometimes. 
because Governor Abbott talking like this, and supposedly Texas doesn't have Common Core, but if you talk to the parents and the families that live in Texas, they have something similar, but it's just not called Common Core, and that's where things are starting to get definitely in a um, very confusing for the parents throughout this nation is, is what's going on for real. Talking with uh, Shelly Stevens here on the Newsmaker Show. Shelly, I wanted to talk to you about uh, NYSET again and the budget. What I've learned from this and, and from the statement that the teachers union president has made is um, that the teachers and their union um, are now supporting parents and the refusing of the test. They understand and agree with us on the over-testing that's taken place, um, that we definitely support high standards. Uh, we support our teachers. And um, they're some of our most important natural resources, if you will, teachers and, and our children. Um, and they're really important. And we need to take an active stand and, and stand beside them in this. Um, I do know locally um, that protests are already being planned in the area. Um, I think that they're going to head to the, to the Corning area probably. But they have a right to speak out. Um, you know, on a daily basis, I don't think, Brian, anybody comes in and tells you who, who's been doing your job for many, many years that all of a sudden you can't do it and, and that you don't do it right or well. And that's what's happening to the teachers. And I'm glad that the union's standing up for them because um, they deserve the support. And especially our teachers here locally, they're one of a kind and they're amazing. Shelly Stevens, uh, any final thoughts before we go? Is there anything I didn't bring up that you want to talk about? Um, I, you know, again, I am, as, as you mentioned several times, I am very outspoken against um, Common Core and the Engaged New York modules, and, and there's a lot more that I know than, you know, say uh, a person walking down the street. Some aren't even aware, if they're not a parent, that there's education reforms going on right now. And again, I ask that everyone gets involved, because whether you have kids or not, taxpayers in general are going to be affected on this uh, in the long term. And, uh, and the bottom line is the children and the teachers should always, always be an important uh, factor in our lives and, and people who we stand next to when they need us. Okay. Shelly Stevens, want to thank you very much for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Brian. And news is next on AM 1480 WLEA Hornell.